Hi dear students, welcome to my channel. This is a continuation of gravitation chapter. In the previous class, I discussed how acceleration due to gravity varies. If you are going away from the earth, it will decrease. If you are going deep inside the earth also, it decreases. The explanation also I given, but I am giving a new concept which you will not find in any book. How the acceleration due to gravity decreases if you are going deep inside the earth. Not only deep, if you just go inside the earth, acceleration due to gravity decreases. Why? I will tell you now. Uh, weight means what? Mass into acceleration due to gravity, mg. Okay? It is like force only. G means acceleration due to gravity. Force or weight divided by mass. Suppose I am going inside the earth. My weight will decrease. My mass will not change. But, but, but my weight will decrease. Weight, why it is decreasing? Because G is decreasing. So I have to find out what is the force on my body. If I am going inside the earth. The force divided by my mass. That is acceleration. Acceleration due to gravity. Actually what happens if you are going inside earth. This is the earth. Suppose uh, you went inside from here to some depth. You went here. At this point on you you divide this earth into two, two pieces. This is two pieces. This portion will attract you along this direction. Remaining portion this portion attract you along this direction. Now, net force on you decreased. Suppose if you are here The total mass of the earth will attract you only one direction. But if you are inside the earth, at this point, one portion of the earth attracting you this direction, another portion is attracting you this direction. The net force, F net, F net decreased. Agree? So F net equal to what? M into g prime so g prime is equal to f net by m this m is fixed if you are going inside the earth this net force is decreasing that is the net weight that is why acceleration due to gravity decreases if you are going deep inside the earth okay if you are going inside the earth it will decrease at the center it will be zero okay now, what we discuss? Kepler's laws. Kepler's laws. Kepler's laws. What Kepler's laws explains our solar system? You know, all planets are revolving around the Earth. Wrong. All planets are revolving around the sun. Okay? And all planets are revolving in elliptical path. At the focus of the elliptical path, sun is there. This is heliocentric model that you know. Kepler given three laws to describe the motion of planets. Okay? The first one is all planets revolve around the sun in elliptical orbit. This is sun. Suppose this is earth. So it will revolve like this. So it is an elliptical path. At the focus of the elliptical path, sun is there. All the planets, not only earth, all the planets. This is the first Kepler's law. Okay? Then what is the second one? You know sun, you know earth. The distance between earth and sun. I am calling the radius 
are the distance between sun and earth sweeps out equal areas in equal time intervals means earth is here the distance this is r here this is uh, for a small actually this distance between sun and earth and keep on decreases okay so this keep on decreases means it may increase also keep on changes what i want to say the distance between sun and earth keep on changes as it is revolving around the sun so this radius vector means the line joining sun and the earth are sun and any planet now i am talking only about earth the distance between sun and earth this radius sweeps equal area in equal time interval so this is the area swept by this one from here to here suppose from here to here the time taken is t suppose this earth came here from here to here this area this area this area is same so here also time is t so the radius vector sweeps equal areas in equal interval of times by this what you can infer here earth is very far from the sun so this area equal to this area means the radius here is more than radius here so here to here at the most slow compared to here to here so this infers the second kepler law infers the speed of the planet changes as it is moving around the sun this is the kepler second law okay now third law also we will discuss kepler third law second law we have here third law t square is proportional to r cube what is t what is r first off t is the time period time period means time taken to to complete one revolution around the sun for earth it will take approximately 365 days no that is a time period the time period square of the time period is proportional to r cube what is r r is semi major axis semi major axis means for a, any ellipse this is major axis this is minor axis this is the center this is major axis no this is semi major axis so this is r this is kepler third law okay so this kepler laws you understood no the application of kepler laws we'll discuss in the next class okay if you like this video please share this video and watch it again and practice ultimately you have to practice and solve the problems different variety of problems related to the same concept you can solve the problem in 11th textbook also a 9th standard textbooks also some problems are given so if you solve that problem no you will get some confidence because what concept i talk now based on this concept the problems are given in the 9th class textbook and 11th textbook keep solving and gain the knowledge till next class bye bye